Welcome to the Quick Resume CFD Toolbox for MATLAB tutorial number 15. In this tutorial we will perform a laminar heat exchanger simulation. Let's have a look at the geometry first. So, there is an inflow of cold water of temperature 20 degrees into the heat exchanger from the left and water bypasses the pipes that carry actually hot water inside but they are oriented perpendicularly to the flow and their external temperature is 50 degrees. So simply speaking, water gets heated by the contact with those pipes. Usually heat exchangers are pretty large, so we just choose the representative geometry for our simulation. If you have a look at the geometry that was created in Gmash, you will see that this is actually the computational domain and it has two holes inside. So the walls of the uh, pipes the central ones are 26 and 27 the inflow is on 22 outflow 23 this is going to be symmetry and those are also walls so actually that's a conjugate heat and fluid flow simulation but since that's a small temperature range we can first solve the cfd problem and on top of that we can solve the heat transfer problem because we assume that changes of water properties with temperature do not matter that much so first steps are pretty standard we just visualize the mesh and uh, convert it to second order so it's pretty nice it's gonna be the two the laminar flow so we do not need much tensor mesh you can see that the size is 8 millimeters by 4 millimeters after that we have to define fluid properties for the simulation and that follows SI units viscosity 10 to minus 6 lambda 0.6 density 1000 heat capacity it's simply one calorie and that's the thermal diffusivity that results from that we initialize the solution and convergence criteria it's going to converge also pretty fast so we do not need much and we steps and we can put resolution small and we define inlet velocity profile to be 0.05 meters per second after that we go to our main iterative loop so all the things are pretty standard in here we assemble neighbor stokes matrix 2d we actually do not need to use any stabilization at all we impose the boundary conditions inlet and 22 slip along x are symmetry boundary conditions on top and bottom and all those are pipe walls so there is no slip that's only fluid boundary condition for now we do not, do not deal with the thermal part after that we compute and plot the residuals break if converged and visualize the solution once the thing is done after that we start solving the heat transfer problem so the fluid flow is already given and on top of that what we do is simply we solve the advection diffusion problem for the temperature field so u is found from the simulation and now we need to find t so obviously we need to prepare another problem we assemble the diffusion matrix to d and Additionally, we impose the velocity field that we just calculated. We impose the boundary conditions for the temperature, that's T inlet 20 and T pipe at pipe walls equals 50. And we solve the problem. We do that in one single step because that's already a linear problem. After that, we do some more post processing. But first, let's run the simulation and see how it performs. So, evaluate the script. Watch the process converge. Should be really fast, as you can see in here. Yes, just six time steps. And we get x velocity out of that uniform profile the flow splits between the pipes and here we observe the temperature field so that's the thermal boundary layer being developed around the cylinders in here okay so let's continue to the post processing of our problem so for instance we can get the heat fluxes from the central pipes 
from 26 and 27 how much heat is being taken from them so in order to find those fluxes we need to find heat flux in the domain first and we've just got the temperature so we calculate the gradient of temperature started with graph t and we follow the Fourier law so we simply multiply the components of gradients to get x and y component of the heat flux by minus lambda and after qx and qi are known we can integrate their values on pipes so we've got variable q pipe 26 and q pipe 27 so let's check it out and you, you can see that the first pipe releases almost 900 watts of energy while the second gets like two thirds of that okay second idea is just to plot the outlet temperature profile so that's the outflow temperature from the field that we have in here so you can see that water in here has temperature just slightly above 20 degrees so it has been hardly heated so that means that this convection is pretty strong in here compared to conduction and maybe that would be a good idea for changing the design for instance okay furthermore we could get drag coefficients that's very similar to the things that you had in airfoil so just check it out how much they are yeah those drag coefficients for the both of those pipes are almost the same no, that's no surprise because the flow conditions around them are al almost the same that's a pretty slow laminar flow over there and uh, we could find the total pressure drop between the inlet and the outlet so that's the pressure at the inlet that's the pressure at the outlet remember that we need to multiply the pressures by fluid density in here to get proper pressures in pascals and you can see that within this heat exchanger there's just eight pascals of pressure drop per four millimeters of this geometry finally we would also like to plot the temperature distribution along the vertical center line of our geometry that is in here and for that we use the function extract data long line and we provide the, term, the coordinates of endpoints so those are x coordinates of x point of points at the end here that is 4 times 1 to the minus 3 and y that is 1 and 3 times 10 to the minus 3 those are just extra parameters for resolution so the profile would look like the following yes here it goes and we can see that in some regions it's just slightly above 20 degrees okay so that's it for this tutorial we hope that you enjoyed please visit our website quickersim.com subscribe like and drop us a comment see you next time